Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And come on now. Come on. If you're watching this show right now, good news, the world did not end. <laughs> Touch and go, because earlier today, a large, potentially hazardous asteroid passed by the Earth. Man, the Oscar campaign for Don't Look Up is out of control. <laughs> too far. Too far. It's just too much. The asteroid... The asteroid is called 1994 PC-1, so it looks like Elon Musk will have to choose a different name for his next child. <laughs> this asteroid is larger than the Burj Khalifa in Dubai and more than twice the size of the Empire State Building in New York City. Okay, who comes up with these size comparisons? <laughs> Guys, I found a death comet. Do we want to say it's the size of a couple of Empire State Buildings? Because it's really more like three M&M stores plus half of Yankee Stadium, or... <laughs> two Costco's minus a Taj Mahal, or maybe a tenth of Rhode Island, and, and we're dead. And here it is. <laughs> all in all, it really sounds, and we're dead! <laughs> and we're dead! <laughs> Come on, they're just joking, they're just joshing. We're just joshing. <laughs> oh, keep it light, all in all. <laughs> it really sounds like we dodged a bullet until you learn the asteroid was 1.2 million miles away, <laughs> which is about five times the distance from the Earth to the moon. Damn it, science! <laughs> that is not close. We're already down here dealing with a pandemic, global warming, and the fall of democracy. Our panic dance card is pretty full already. <laughs> and so are our pants. <laughs> Knock it off. Speaking of things uh, not happening, Congress. Today, Senate Democrats pressed ahead with an effort to pass new voting rights protections through Congress, even though the measure appears all but dead. Come on, guys, don't give up the fight. Don't know. Do not get discouraged. In the Senate, there are a lot of things that appear all but dead. <laughs> now, despite... Where are you going? Get back. You're not going anywhere. Despite how popular these bills are, they seem doomed thanks to a filibuster by the Republicans in the Senate. Now, Democrats could modify the filibuster rules to exclude voting rights bills, but that's being blocked by Senators Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. <laughs> seen here crowding into an elevator with all of their friends. <laughs> but the Dems are holding the vote anyway because they say they need to put who's for and who's against voting rights on the record. <laughs> Gotta know. Lay them on the table. Put them on the table. As Senator Martin Heinrich put it, whether it's good strategy or not, it's more important for those people whose votes are being jeopardized. It's absolutely critical that they understand who is on their side. That's right. Because once you know, once you know which politicians are keeping you from being able to vote, you can vote them out, and I see the problem. I see the problem. <laughs> that is a toughie. That is a toughie. Yeah. That's a poser is what that is. People are frustrated naturally. People like music legend Stevie Wonder, who released this statement on YouTube. Any senator who cannot support the protection of voting rights in the United States of America cannot say that they support the Constitution. Stop the hypocrisy. Cut the boot ish. Oh! Oh, did you hear that? Oh! Oh! Oh, oh Tish! <laughs> I want to thank Stevie Wonder for standing up for democracy and swearing in a way I can air on my CBS television show. <laughs> you, sir. <laughs> yes. you, that tit, the bull yes. tish. Yes. 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 That yes. bull tish. Come on. You, sir, are one bad mother trucker. And, <laughs> senators, you know how hard it is to make Stevie Wonder that angry? The meanest thing he's ever said up till now is, you're just my part-time lover. <laughs> Stevie wandered on. If you care and support our rights, do the hard work. You can't please everybody, but you can protect all of us. And to keep it all the way real, the filibuster is not working for democracy. Why won't you? Oh. That's good. That's really good. That is like really that. good. You tell him, Stephen T. Wonder. He then set his feelings to music and released it on the new album, Songs in the Key of Cuff You, <laughs> featuring his hits, I Just Called to Say Go to Hell, For Once in My Life Do Something, 
super sedition and his tribute to the Republican Party, Ivory and Ivory. <laughs> of course, Ivory and Ivory live together in <laughs> Of course, the 2022 campaign is already underway. Uh, down in Louisiana, your home state, John, one Senate candidate has a new ad talking about legalizing marijuana and rightly pointing out the racial disparity in drug enforcement. Most of the people police are arresting aren't dealers, but rather people with small amounts of pot, just like me. I'm Gary Chambers, and I'm running for the U.S. Senate, and I approve this message. Put his money where his mouth is. Putting it out there. Yeah. He's getting high in his campaign ad. <laughs> we haven't seen him move that bold since Eisenhower's pro crystal meth slogan, Ike Like Ice. <laughs> now, if he wins the primary, Chambers Republican opponent would be Louisiana Senator and dog watching you eat a meatball, John Kennedy. And it would be quite a debate. Listen to some of Kennedy's recent quotes. Getting rid of the 60 vote threshold in the Senate, in my judgment, would be like, um, like giving whiskey and car keys to a teenage boy. I don't know about you, Trey, but my car doesn't run off fairy dust. My car doesn't run off unicorn urine. Most un Americans understand that to a bear, we all taste like chicken. <laughs> Are we sure we know which candidate is high? <laughs> One thing, tastes like chicken. You taste like chicken, I didn't. Chicken. I didn't know that. One thing that's definitely still happening is the pandemic. While Omicron appears to have peaked here in New York City, some countries are just getting started, like in Beijing, where they locked down an office building with workers still inside after a single Omicron case was detected. Hey, anti-vaxxers complaining about the CDC's communist policies. Why don't you try protesting at the Beijing Olive Garden? <laughs> Let me know how that goes. And I'm... A little perspective. That, I'm just yeah. asking for a little perspective here. I'm not the only one fed up with these mask holes. In Mexico, Leonardo Schwebel, an anchor for Telediario Guadalajara, Mexico's news leader, has had just about enough. Ustedes, malditos antivacunas, bola de imbéciles, ya déjense de y por lo menos pónganse it's nice to know that whatever country you're from, we all speak the universal language of I hope all the anti-vaxxers in Mexico saw that, especially the ones who say they heard the vaccine gives their cousin's friend Los Huevos Gigantes. <laughs> I heard that, yeah. <laughs> it's not just people at risk for COVID. Recently, lions at a zoo in South Africa got severe COVID-19 from asymptomatic zoo handlers. Now, don't worry, the lions will be just fine. After 10 days of isolation, They'll go back to their normal, healthy routine of trying to take a nap in the shade while school kids throw ice at them. <laughs> These zoo infections raise concerns about the creation of new variants because after the animals catch the virus, the disease could mutate in them and reinfect humans. Okay, well, that explains Disney's new update of The Lion King. That's a, I believe they call that a Hakuna Mutata. <laughs> In order to prevent the spread of COVID from animals back to humans, researchers are suggesting mask wearing as well as barriers so that visitors to zoos can't get too close to them. They've also installed signs that say, please don't tongue the lions. <laughs> and it's not just lions. In Hong, Hong Kong, right? In Hong Kong, it was announced that 11 hamsters tested positive for the Delta variant. I know it's adorable, but we have to stop these unlikely lion-hamster friendships. 
Between a close brush with an asteroid, a teetering democracy, and a raging plague, it can feel like the end times, but if it makes you feel any better, a California city has been overrun by crows. <laughs> the good news is the crows don't pose any serious public health risk. As one doctor explained, you'd have to lick all the crow droppings on a park bench to come even remotely close to catching something from a crow roost. <laughs> Mind me not to sign up for any of that guy's studies. Okay, keep licking, keep licking. How do you feel? Not sick yet? Lick the next one. Keep licking. Lick another bench. So, 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 the crows aren't dangerous, but they are a nuisance. Luckily, the city has a secret weapon, lasers. Pew, pew. <laughs> okay, you'll scare away the crows, but they'll just be replaced by thousands of excited cats. <laughs> Why? Why lasers? Why lasers? A few cat, a few cat owners here. Why lasers? Well, because when crows see a green laser shining in the trees at night, they think animals are running over the branches and they fly somewhere else. That sounds complicated. <laughs> if only there were something people have used for centuries to scare away crows. Some sort of crow frightener, a, a fear crow, something like that. Ugh, if I only had a brain. <laughs> now, Yes. If the lasers don't work, one ornithologist suggested officials aim firecrackers and bottle rockets at the birds, which will make them freak out. That advice brought to you by world-renowned crow expert, Kyle from across the street. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Brian Cox and Samantha Bee. But when we come back,